and as named with another video, now with hips and legs anatomy. As usually, the video will be subdivided in two chapters, one theoretical and another practical. I would like to remember that this video is a part of a playlist about human figure and perspective and the links on my Instagram and the Discord server of the channel are available in the video description. If you are new into the channel, consider giving a like, subscribing, enable the bell to be updated of new videos. We'll use two books as our reference. The first one by Michael Hampton, Figure Drawing, Design and Invention. The second one by T.B. Choi, Design Your Own Anime and Manga Character. When it comes to draw the legs and hips, Michael Hampton have a more complex and technical way to draw. On the other hand, we have T.B. Choi that has a simplified method to draw the same thing. So I'm using these two books as a way to have a balance between complex and simplified. Before going straight forward to the anatomy of the muscles, we need to know how to draw the structure that the muscle will be put it in. So previously, I already did a video about how to draw the pelvis in perspective. We'll use the pelvis and the skeleton structure. I'm talking about the bones like femur, tibia, fibula as a way to have a starting point. In Michael Hampton's book, he uses cylinders as a way to simplify the bones, to turn easier and simplify it to find the perspective of the bone. But when I was trying to draw, I found more easier to me to draw the bones rather than drawing the cylinder. But sometimes I use the cylinders as a way to find the perspective and the next step I start drawing the bones. Because I feel that with the bones, I know exactly where to place the muscle, I know the origin point, the insertion point, all this stuff. But using cylinders, I lose a lot of these kind of landmarks. Now it's time to talk about the muscle. I will not go deeply in anatomical terms because I think that the main goal is to know how to draw the muscle and know how the muscle behaves in a three-dimensional space. We will start with the gluteus medial muscle represented in orange. We can use a triangle to represent this muscle, like the same shape we used to represent the deltoid. Now we have the gluteus maximum muscle represented in red. We can use a butterfly as our reference to this muscle group. We have another muscle represented in blue. You can see that the origin of this muscle is on the beginning of the femur bone and have an insertion point on fibia bone. In green, we have an adductor muscle group that can be represented as a triangle where two of his vertices are on the femur bone and the remaining vertex is on the bottom part of the pelvis. And on the animation, we are able to see how this muscle behaves on a three-dimensional space. Next, we have the sartorius muscle, represented in orange. The muscle has an origin point on the top part of the pelvis and insertion point on the top part of the tibia bone. Next, in red, we have the quadriceps group of muscle. We can see on the animation how this muscle group behaves in perspective. We have another muscle group now in CN that have an origin point under the gluteus maximus muscle and the muscle have two insertion points on the tibia bone. We can see that on the back view this muscle make a shape of an inverted V. We have the last muscle group gastrocnemius represented in purple. For me, knowing the names of the muscles, things like that, are not really important. Because our main goal is to know how to draw the muscle and how this muscle behaves in perspective or in a 3D environment. Now we can start with the practical part. I started sketching the base of the pelvis and I added the skeleton structure for the legs. After that, I started drawing each muscle, knowing the origin and insertion points, and knowing how the muscle behaves in relationship to the other muscle groups in this specific position. After that, as a way to simplify, I started drawing the contour of the muscles. Now we are not looking for each muscle, the goal is to draw the overall shape of these muscle groups together. 
and on the final step I added a little bit of gray scaling to show the planes like with light and shadow we have another front view example now with a different pose but the logic remains the same I started sketching the pelvis and the black bones I did the same thing like previously drawing each muscle knowing the relationship between the muscles in this specific pose and after that I started drawing the contour to simplify the overall shape of the muscles and the leg after that I added a little bit of light and shadow using grayscaling so we had two examples in a front view now it's time to a back view example I did the same thing I started sketching the base of the pelvis and the bones after that I added the muscle groups that we were talking about previously after that I added contour to simplify the muscle groups and showing the overlapping between the muscles and a little bit of grayscaling you can see that the main logic and the process to draw the leg in perspective remain the same if you already know how to draw a muscle in a three-dimensional space you are literally able to draw the leg in any position that you want showing that our goal isn't to know how to draw a muscle on a specific pose on a specific angle it's to know how the muscle behaves in relationship to the other muscles and how we can draw this in a three-dimensional space in any any angle any pose yeah knowing how literally to draw the thing so with this we are on the end of the video if I helped you, consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, enable the bell to be notified of new videos. And if you play Fortnite or any game on the Epic Game Store, consider using my creating code tag and the HV3. Thank you. Bye bye.